everybody, George here from Painful Revolution. So I thought today we would uh, talk about cleaning and kind of do a quick run through on the what you should expect when you're cleaning your marker and uh, kind of the key places to, to keep an eye out when you are cleaning. So first let me introduce you to some of your best friends. Uh, you when you're when you set down to start cleaning your equipment, you want to have some of this stuff nearby. Uh, a good set of Allen keys. You know, generally your marker will come with Allen keys, particularly the ones that you need for your marker. So it doesn't have to be a full set like this, but you know, you want the Allen keys to work on the marker. Uh, also, what can be helpful is some screwdrivers. You know, the smaller ones. I got a Phillips and a flathead, just in case you run into anything that. I might need them. Uh, some O-ring picks, you know, one or two or four like I've got. Uh, that is going to help you, you know, remove some O-rings if you do need to take them off. And I mean, I really like to get in there. So I usually have some Q-tips nearby just to help me get into places that I can't reach. This is my best friend. You can pick up toothbrushes for very, very inexpensive. These are really going to help you. I'll probably reference this quite a bit. Uh, you also want to grab your swab and we're going to use that particularly for the barrel and for cleaning out the breech. We also want a microfiber and some lube. Now, if your marker particularly uses oil, you'll want the oil. Uh, we're talking about a spool valve here, so we need lube. So those are, um, those are the important ones. Allen keys, microfiber, toothbrush I put really high up on there. Uh, your squeegee and some lube. If you don't have the O-ring picks, don't run out and get them. Uh, they just are very helpful. So let's talk about it. So when you get home from playing and your marker is dirty, particularly if, if it's been raining or snowing or there's been a lot of mud or if you got shot quite a bit in the marker, you definitely want to get it clean. Now I'm working with a die DSR here, but if you have a newer spool valve, it's probably going to be very similar. If you have an older marker, a lot of this information is still going to be viable. If you guys have specific questions, please let us know. Leave it in the comments. Get a hold of us. We can help you out. But we're just going to use this DSR to, to uh, kind of demonstrate. So the first thing I like to do is remove the barrel. And if it's a two-piece barrel, you can take it apart entirely. And it's a little bit easier to clean from there. A lot of times what you'll get is if you get breaks in here, you can just push them out with, with your swab. What I like to do for the porting, if you got paint in the porting here is, I'll get that swab in there a few times, leave it in there, and then with my toothbrush, I can brush out all that porting, pull out that paint before it dries, or if it's already dry, dried, you can get in there and really scrape it out, clean out that porting so that it's good and fresh. Same thing with the back, you'll just run your swab through there, get it so it's nice and glassy. And that's basically what you're looking for on the barrels, you can clean anything off the exterior with a microfiber. Also, with that threading, you'll notice uh, you'll start getting a lot of gunk in that threading. You guys at home, take your barrel off. You've probably already got gunk in there. That's where this guy comes in. You can just toothbrush that threading, pull all that gunk out. That toothbrush gets into the teeth on that threading. That's really gonna really gonna pull it out, huh? Toothbrush teeth. Uh, I just I just said that. Whatever. Uh, okay, cool. Now, if you've got, again, if you've got one of the newer markers, your bolt is probably quick release. So you can just pull out the entire system. And then from here, you've got your whole breach clear. So again, you can run your barrel swab through and clean that up. Now we are working with a DSR, so there is an eye pipe. So remember with the die markers, you should expect an eye pipe. Not only is that eye pipe going to uh, hold the detents, but it also protects the eyes. But a lot of times what will happen if you are cleaning without the barrel on or if you're dry firing without the barrel on, the eye pipe is going to get ejected or it'll get caught on that swab. And, you know, you'll be like, oh, oh, man, what happened? It's right there. So just be cognizant of that if you're working with a die. You've got that eye pipe. But then we can swab the whole breech. This will do a pretty good job. I also like to get into the feed neck. Pull out any paint that's been in there. Also, if you can see it and you can reach it, you can clean it up with that microfiber. Or if you got anything that's particularly persistent, toothbrush. I love this thing. I really do. Uh, you can clean that out with that. Um, same thing on the threading on the inside here. You can toothbrush that all out. 
make it nice and squeaky. And that should clean everything out of here. Now, moving on to the bolt, the engine, the core, you do want to keep this nice and clean. Uh, this is basically the heart. So we want to make sure this is good. There's plenty of, for your particular marker, there's a manual, there's probably exploded view of this. There might even be a video of how to take it apart. So for your particular system, you can start stripping this down, take apart all the components. And as you go, you basically just want to wipe, wipe everything down. There's going to be the old lube on there that you can just wipe off, start cleaning all those components. Also take any of that paint that's on there off, clean this guy up real good. Maybe flip it around in your hands a bit. Um, same thing with the, with the can, with the bolt, just everything. Wipe it all down. This guy is, I started with a clean marker, but now putting it back together, we grab our lube and we want to make sure everywhere there's an O-ring that we put a pretty good amount of lube. You don't have to cake it on so that it's dripping off, but you also don't want this to be dry. Basically we want the lube to fill the gap between the O-rings and the milling. So everywhere you've got an O-ring, we're going to put a little bit of lube, fresh lube. Uh, and as you're doing that, you can start putting stuff back together. Now, again, if you guys have specific questions about your particular marker, you can get a hold of us and we can instruct you. Or again, you can leave comments below. Uh, I am just trying to show you kind of a general idea of what what you should expect. So I might be going a little quick through this or you know, not breaking things down entirely. But I uh, just kind of want to give you guys a general idea of cleaning. Again, please get a hold of us. Uh, don't don't get stuck. We'd be happy to help you. So yeah, there we go. So everything, everything is lubed and put back together. Let's talk a little bit about the body of the marker actually. So if you've get, if you've gotten shot somewhere on the body of the marker, particularly up in the grips or the trigger, you want to get that paint out of there before it dries and gets real nasty. So one of the, one of the first things you should do is get in under the grips. Now, when you're working with an electronic marker, one of the things that I like to consider is the fact that it is under power. So if you're working with cleaning materials, which you should really not be, you should only be using this rag, um, that toothbrush. You notice I don't have any cleaning products, no Windex, no, no alcohol. Sometimes if I've got a really persistent, like somebody left paint for years and years, I will use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to loosen it up. Um, I will use a little bit of, um, of rubbing alcohol maybe to get that off of like the body where there's metal and that sort of thing but you notice I don't have any of that because I don't recommend you use it just clean things dry but with that in mind again when you're dealing with an electronic marker just take the power out now on a DSR we need an extra tool we need a coin to get to the battery which is up here on the front grip but on all electronic markers for me before I start working with them, I like to just pull the power source. And a lot of markers will hold a little bit of power. So I'll actually hold the power button to try and activate it just to drain that power. Now the marker is not under power, so you don't have to worry about touching any wires or touching the board, shorting anything out. It's just a little thing I like to do. If you guys want to do it, great. Uh, that also helps us get under that front grip where sometimes paint can be hiding just underneath that grip, we can clean the outside of the marker, we can clean the inside of the grip. If something is persistent, we can scrub it off. And for the rear grip, on the DSR there is that one screw on each side, and then the grip peels off. Whoa, don't lose the screw. And then the grip peels off like the toolless ones do. There we go. So again, once you get the grips off, there we go. 
once you get the grips off, you can clean underneath the grips. You can clean the frame of the marker itself. Now, that's what I'm referring to. You see how our board is exposed and we got a lot of electronics. That's just the part that kind of, you know, gives me a little bit of a concern. So I don't like anything to be touching that that's wet. So, especially if it's under power. But we can keep that clean. We can get our toothbrush, clean everywhere where there's little crevices, clean that up and get in there. Now, again, if you've actually been shot in the body of the marker, you might start finding that paint has gotten in through that, that trigger guard or, or um, excuse me, that gap in the frame where the trigger clears. We can get that with the toothbrush. We can clean either side of there. And if you have to go deeper, you can start taking the marker apart. You can pull the body and the frame apart. For each marker, it's gonna be a little bit different, but basically there's gonna be a couple of screws just holding the frame and the body together. You can start digging in there. As you go, you clean and re-lube. So as you get in there, you're gonna find O-rings that you're gonna wipe, wipe clean and then put lube before you put them back together. Uh, same thing goes with the ASA. If you start to get down inside there, you're gonna start wiping down O-rings, cleaning stuff up, putting it back together. Um, but for the most part, if you can reach it with the toothbrush or you can reach it with your, your microfiber, clean it up, put it back together. So after you've taken everything apart and you've cleaned it and you've re-lubed it, you've put it back together the way you found it, you basically just do that, put it back together. And you should have a nice, clean, ready to go marker. Last thing you wanna do, once you have it fully assembled, fully put back together, let's put some air on it and make sure it's not leaking. Worst thing to discover when you get to the field is that your marker's leaking. So after you've done a full clean, you put everything back together, put some air on it, make sure it's not leaking. Again, if you're using a die, make sure that your eye pipe is in and that your barrel is on before you dry fire it. Also guys, it's not a great idea to dry fire markers. Uh, without the ball in there, it could hyperextend the bolt. I mean, I'm sure people have opinions as to whether or not that happens, but um, I like to err on the side of caution. So once you do put your marker back together and you've got your barrel on there, just make sure there's no paint in the marker and you've got the air on it and then just block the barrel with a rag or if you have to shove it in a pillow, dry fire it that way so that there is a little bit of back pressure. Um, that's, that's really what I recommend to extend the longevity of your marker. Again, I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of opinions. You guys are welcome to leave your comments below uh, as to whether or not you think that makes a difference, but I think it does. So that's what I like to do. Um, so yeah, that's a basic cleaning guys. Those are the, the parts you want to pay attention to. You want to pay attention to your barrel, your breech, your bolt system. And if you've gotten paint on the marker, it's usually hiding under the, under the grips. Um, and if you want to do a full clean, start digging in there. Just to recap, my two best friends are this microfiber and this toothbrush, but it's also really handy to have O-ring picks, Allen keys, a couple of screwdrivers, and maybe some Q-tips hanging by. So again, if you guys have any questions, oh, and your, your swab. So if you guys have any questions, please, please get a hold of us. We love to help. I hope some of this was informative for you. Uh, maybe we'll do some more in-depth cleaning videos, but uh, I just wanted to do something real simple for you guys to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But yeah, if you have any questions, please get a hold of me. Please get a hold of us. Leave some comments below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, now something fell off. Something just fell back there. Who, who was that text from? Was that an important text? No. It was from Tino. Tino text.